and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, you might have noticed I changed the title card a little bit. Before it said reading, writing, and literary concepts, but now it says reading, writing, and learning. The reason for that is, first of all, I felt like it was a little bit redundant. Reading and writing kind of encapsulate literary concepts within them. And then also I've done a couple of other videos like the college tips video that aren't strictly literature related, but I think could be interesting to the same audience. I talk a lot about classic literature on this channel, and I just wanted to look at some of the most frequently googled questions about classic literature and see what questions people are asking and whether I'm able to answer them. Now, before we get started, I do want to say I don't have like a PhD in English or anything like that. I have a master's in library science, a bachelor's in French, and I was also an English minor as an undergrad. But this is mostly just from my personal experience with reading and looking into classic literature. I don't have a formal degree in the subject and I don't want you to assume that I do. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. So what I did was I went into Firefox and I went into incognito mode. That way my previous search history won't influence the results at all. And I typed in, is classic literature? And these are the results that I got. So the first question that came up was, is classic literature a genre? And I think the answer to that would be sort of, but not entirely. We do group books into the category of classic literature, and we talk about that as a genre. But at the same time, it's not a genre like romance or mystery or science fiction that deals with the subject matter. It has to do more with the books being older and very well respected. Classic books might fall into many other genres. For instance, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne would be an early sci-fi novel. But at the same time, it is a category of book, so in a way it is a genre. Next up, is classic literature still relevant today? Personally, I think that it is. I know that there are probably other people who have very different opinions on that. And I'm not going to pretend that I like every classic novel that I've read. But I do think it's good to be exposed to the classics and to understand there are reasons that a lot of them are considered classics. They might have important social commentary, deal with important themes that are, you know, good things to, to think about and to ponder. So, yeah, I would say that they're still relevant today for the most part. Although I've read a few that I can't find any relevance for me personally in. <laughs> okay, moving on, I'm going to take these two questions together. Is classic literature overrated? And is classic literature good? I think it depends on the book and your personal taste. There are definitely classics that I think are good that I have read for pleasure. Nobody forced me to read them. I've read Les Miserables multiple times in its unabridged version because I wanted to. So yes, I think some classics are really good. I also think they're not for everybody. No particular classic novel is going to appeal to everybody in the same way that no particular modern novel is going to appeal to everybody. It's a matter of everybody has their own taste and is drawn to different things, and I think that that's fine, and that's as it should be, really. As for the other question, is classic literature overrated? This may be a surprise, but I think in some cases it can be. For instance, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare, and I've read a lot of his plays. And this may be a controversial opinion, but Hamlet is not the be-all and end-all of Shakespeare, let alone English literature. It's a very good, very well-written play with a lot to say and a lot of good questions that it explores. But at the same time, there were other plays that Shakespeare wrote that I personally enjoy more, and that I think also have a lot of important things to say, even some of the comedies like Twelfth Night or Much Ado About Nothing. There can be kind of an imbalance in terms of certain books or certain works of literature being put on a pedestal. It's not that classic literature is elite and what's being written now is just garbage, because there are things that are being written now that will most likely go on to become classic literature. I'm not going to speculate on what, but there are classics from every era and I'm sure there will be from this one as well. So all of that being said, I wouldn't necessarily say that classic literature as a concept is overrated or that all classics are overrated. I certainly wouldn't say that because in fact, I think that there are also some classics that are severely underrated. But I think that there can be a tendency to put certain works of literature or certain authors on a pedestal in a way that's really not productive at all. All right, the next question, is classic literature fiction? 
this is really interesting because the answer is mostly yes. There are works that are considered classics that are not fictional, though. For example, Plato's Republic is a non-fiction work that's considered a classic. Now, there are fictional stories within it, like, for instance, his allegory of the cave. But overall, it was more political and philosophical than fictional. It certainly wasn't just meant to entertain. Another example would be Anne Frank's The Diary of a Young Girl. This was her diary that she kept, and it was describing her real experiences. So it's considered a classic because of its historical value, but its value lies in its actual nonfiction nature. For the most part, though, a lot of what we consider to be classics are fictional. And I think that that's an interesting question as to why that is. I think the answer might be because factual information, nonfiction, often changes over time. We learn more, we have more, you know, scientific innovations or our world changes around us in ways that make nonfiction works lose their relevance more quickly. Whereas fiction often is kind of a look into people's hearts and minds. It follows characters that are not real, so it doesn't matter if information becomes outdated. Sometimes you will see, like, older science fiction that proposes ideas that are no longer possible. But even in that case, that doesn't necessarily make the work irrelevant, because it was never meant to be realistic in the first place. Alright, so this is a big one. Why is classic literature important? I think my previous answer to is it fiction actually lends kind of some insight into that. Classic literature, in my opinion, is important because it's a window into the past. We see what was being written, what stories were being told in the past, and often the stories that are being told by a particular society reflect on their culture, their worldview, what they find to be important in life. For instance, reading Jane Austen's novels tells you a lot about how romance and courtship were viewed in the Regency era. Classic literature can also be important because of what it tells us about the history of literature. So not just the history of people, but also how literature evolved over time. Recently, I made a couple of videos about Sherlock Holmes and the origins of the mystery genre, and how looking back at early detective fiction in the 19th century kind of can help us to understand how it evolved in the 20th and now the 21st century. That can be the case in a lot of genres. Jane Austen's novels, for instance, are the predecessors of the modern romantic comedy, and the works of H.G. Wells and Jules Verne are early science fiction. So if we can see what things looked like in previous eras and how different stories were told, even, you know, looking back to the Middle Ages or the ancient world, the literature that we see there is different from what we write today, and I think that those differences are important. And another reason is that classic novels often pose important questions and explore important themes, and this can help us to develop analytical and critical thinking skills. I know that a lot of people view questions about symbolism or theme or other literary concepts as being kind of abstract and unimportant for daily life. And I would agree that they're not necessarily something that you'll put into practice on the job in regular life unless you become an English teacher, but I think that considering some of the questions that are posed by classic books can be worthwhile. For instance, they often ask questions about what's right and wrong, or what is the meaning of our short-lived existence? And while those may not be comfortable questions to always think about, I do think that they're things that people should think about at some point in their lives. So classic books can be important on a number of different levels. Next we have, what is classic literature definition? Classic literature is older literature, but it's not just older because there are books that have been completely forgotten by time. Classic literature also implies that it has some kind of significance and that it has stood the test of time. There are books or plays or short stories or poems or other forms of literature that were written centuries ago, even thousands of years ago, that we are still reading today. And the reason for that is not always because they're the most entertaining things that came out of their time period, but because they had some kind of significance they explored some kind of important question, they had some kind of impact on history or on the evolution of literature in some genre or another, because they were in some way important and they captured people's imagination and stood the test of time, or they had some kind of impact on the world around them. All right, next up, why is classic literature hard to read? That's a really good question, and the reason for that is that language and society evolve over time. 
language, for one thing, definitely has changed since the Middle Ages or Shakespeare's time or even the 19th century. For instance, when Shakespeare says thee and thou, we might understand that those mean you, but it might not register as automatically as just using the word you would for us because that's what we're used to. Or you might understand that when Jane Austen says that someone was a handsome woman, it means the same way that pretty or beautiful would to us. But because we don't tend to refer to women as handsome anymore, it might throw you off. Social norms in society have also evolved over time, and so the things that were seen as normal in the 19th century are now a little bit odd to us. Gender roles have changed over time, the way that we view love and marriage has changed over time, politics have changed over time, just kind of the way that we view the world. For instance, in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, if Lydia were to elope with Wickham and then not marry him, it would reflect badly on all of the sisters, even though the other four had nothing to do with it. Why would that be the case? Because in today's world, we wouldn't view Lydia as harshly for what she did, and we certainly wouldn't blame it on her sisters. That's a case where society and social norms have changed so much over time that we need to learn more about the historical time period in order to understand what's going on in the novel. And then finally, storytelling techniques have changed a lot over time as well. The way that we tell a story in the modern day is very different from the way that they told a story in the 19th century, or the 18th century, or the Renaissance, or so on and so forth. For instance, in a lot of older epics from the ancient world or the Middle Ages, repetition is used because the stories were originally told out loud. So for instance, in the Odyssey, when Athena is described as grey-eyed Athena, or the Mediterranean is the wine-dark sea, or things along those lines. That kind of repetition we don't expect to see in modern books. So between the different storytelling techniques of different time periods, the different worldviews and social norms, and the ways in which language has evolved over time, the older something is, the more likely it is to be a challenge to read. And then finally, is Shakespeare classic literature? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Shakespeare is classic literature. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it and you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post videos once or twice a week, usually on Mondays and Thursdays.